Hello, it's uh, David again. Just uh, very happy. Just have to slide open the door of my camper van. Very happy to be with you again, and uh, have some things on my heart. Some very exciting things. Um, this video is entitled "Evil Leaders?" Question mark. Evil tithe? Question mark. And. Um, this is being made in response to a really a quite wonderful letter, uh, wonderful in the sense of its honesty and thoughtfulness, um, that was posted by a man by the name Sam Taylor in the comments section yesterday. And I, I wrote him a, a long reply to it, and I just want to share that because there's two things in particular. He He's not totally... The stinky dead rat hasn't completely completely eaten him up on inside. He's to his credit, he he's trying to still not be to, to imagine that he's not really against us. That he's still like really wants us all to be happy and wants us to be happy for the the people who have fallen away from the faith. We, that we should be at peace with them and and not be troubled by the things they say and the way they are and that they actively, the vast majority of them, actively try to destroy the faith of those that haven't fallen away yet. And many of you, you know exactly how this is. And it's not that they're necessarily even trying to be malicious. It's just what's in the well comes up in the bucket. And if you've um, deserted the truth, you know, believing that you've actually found the light, of course, you have to try to justify yourself by trying to share your darkness that you think is light with the people you love. So I th I really believe Sam's sincere. But he shows that he has swallowed the stinky, rotten, dead rat by what he says about our leaders and but what by what he says about how evil it is that the, the church oppresses poor people by making them tithe, and that's just absolutely outrageous and inexcusable, you know. So anyway, I can't, I can't stand to keep my mouth, mouth shut about this, so I have to read his letter and give him a response. So this is a response video, and I think this might help a lot of us to be able to answer these kind of attacks, but mostly to sniff this stuff out, because the the evil one, didn't get where he is by being subtle. He, the accuser of the brethren just doesn't just jump out with her red suit on and a, and a pointed tail and horns and say, hey, I'm going to steal your childlike faith and take you to hell with me. And you'll think you're walking in the light. <laughs> you know, he doesn't do that. No, he, he's way more subtle than that. And, and so we really have to... Uh, it says specifically in the Bible, don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. He goes about as a roaring lion seeking who, whom he may devour. And actually in um, in uh, Corinthians, Paul specifically writes that the, that the evil one is is able through false apostles and, and is, is able to appear as angel, as an angel of light. And so, you know, this man thinks he's found the light. And and he hasn't yet decided that our light is horrible darkness. He's trying to have it both ways. He has decided that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is horrible darkness, but he's he's trying to pretend to himself that he hasn't. But you'll you'll see what I'm talking about when we read his letter and read my response. But that that's serious business. We don't want to just have serious business here. This channel has to be fun because Men are, what is it? Uh, men fell, Adam fell that men might be, and men are that they might have joy. So we got to have a little joy going on. And I got some serious joy going on today. And have, ever since I heard this, I'm sure um, you're all quite, many of you are quite familiar with this. But it's only two minutes long, so please don't depart the video. When I show this to us, but I just want to share this just in case anybody hasn't seen it. It's so delightful. Let's see here.
These are the ads. I have to click past the ads. Skip ad. Okay, here we go. I've believed all my life about prayer. In many, many cases, a, a lot of the people in the church, maybe most, pray for the brethren. And, and I just want to somehow take that up a notch in people's hearts where they understand that that really, really matters. It's the most amazing man. He's one of the most amazing men that's All ever the lived. This that man. could be wrong with somebody who shouldn't get COVID. I, that's who I was. And I should have been probably um, taken. Uh, but, uh, but I wasn't. Thank you, Abba. But I think with all my heart uh, that it was the prayer of little kids in Kansas and uh, and uh, uh, sweet uh, colleagues that I met in in uh, Zimbabwe and uh, someone praying in a Japanese language that I don't even understand but that they do and God does. Uh, I believe that I'm the beneficiary of that. And uh, so here I am. I'm staggering toward the finish line. Uh, I refuse to get off the track. <laughs> I'm, I'm still in the race. Uh, and uh, I'm grateful to the saints for that, uh, for those prayers. You know, I love the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart. He's the only perfect human being that ever lived, but I don't think there's ever been a more wonderful man on the earth other than him. There's never been a better man than Elder Holland. I mean, the beauty of his heart and spirit, the clarity and power of his teaching, his love and compassion for all the weak and needy saints like me. You, can, you can't, you can you'd have to be dumb as a post to miss it. You know, you'd have to really be dull not to see that this is a choice. Elect human being, just most marvelous man. I'm so thankful he's doing better. And I'm so thankful for all of your prayers for him. And we, we I, I don't want to stop praying for him. I don't want him staggering toward the finish line. It'd be nice if he could race towards the finish line. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we'll see, see how we go. But I think we just need to keep praying for President Nelson and Elder Holland. <laughs> but it's so encouraging. And our Father's word is true. And what it says in the last chapter of the Book of Mormon that, you know, these gifts, you know, that were in the church in the beginning, our Heavenly Father hears and answers prayer and does miracles according to our faith. And especially if we're honest and we're just like, we believe, help our unbelief, we want to pray in faith, increase our faith, deliver us from our unbelief. We're just going to keep praying because the more we, the more we use that muscle, the stronger it'll get. And the more we exercise our faith, the stronger it'll get. And the more we refuse to let that unbelief that's in our soul hinder us from praying, the weaker it'll get. The dog you feed the most wins. You know, let's feed our faith and starve the dog of our unbelief, you know. So anyway, that's just such good news to me. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for, by the power of your Holy Spirit, touching and bringing Jeffrey Holland through a health crisis that, as he says, probably should have taken him from us and that we still have him with us. Okay? So that's that. All right? So isn't that good news? Okay. Next, um, I'm starting to put up YouTube shorts. And uh, so please, I just want to say, I've really become aware that the percentage of viewers that like these videos, that, that bother to click the like button, 
speaks very loudly to the YouTube algorithm. And if a video is liked by a very high percentage of people, YouTube's algorithm automatically pushes it out into the world further and further and further and more numerous for longer, depending on the percentage of people that like it. So, you know, just a very small percentage of people that watch these videos bother to click the like button. Please make a habit. You know, we are creatures of habit. If you make yourself click the like button every time you watch the video, unless you don't like it, I don't want you to like videos, click like on videos that you don't like. But if you like the video and, and you wish the whole world could see these, if you think the light of the restoration would get out to people that need to see it and pierce the accusatory fog and find the millions of other people like me that are out there that can't even see the glory of the restoration because of the accusatory fog, I, I want to blow that accusatory fog completely out of the water. And I can't do it by myself. You have to send me your testimonies. You have to do what you already do, which is send these to your friends and get other people to watch them. But you have to. It's a simple thing, man, but it matters. Click the like button. Click the subscribe button. Click the like. You've already clicked subscribe. Click the like button every time you watch a video that you like, especially these shorts. Because these shorts are advertising for the hundred long videos of really some very good content, some very encouraging and edifying and and strengthening against the attacks on the faith content that's already on the channel. But only a tiny, tiny percentage of the people, there's 2 billion people on YouTube. 25% of the Earth's population is on YouTube. Tiny, just a tiny little drop in the bucket of the people have seen these things that would benefit from them. And you want to change that? Hit the like button. You'll you'll help it get out there. It will make a huge difference. All right. All that said, now we're going to get to our friend's... Uh, he wants to be a friend, but he's really stopped being a friend, but he doesn't really realize that he's stopped being a friend. But anyway, let, let's, let's take a look at what Sam has to say here. God bless Sam. Heavenly Father, we just pray for Sam Taylor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that by the power of the Holy Ghost you would touch his heart and open his eyes to the trap that he's fallen into, the ancient trap. Amen. This is Sam's letter. <laughs> for the video, evil leaders, question mark, evil tithe, question mark. I want to start saying, I'm happy for you and your seeming enthusiasm for the church. <laughs> seeming enthusiasm. <laughs> seeming enthusiasm. <laughs> That's funny. I really hope it works out for you! Exclamation point. I recognize you're new to the Latter-day Saint Church, and often when something's new and exciting, we want to share it with everyone. Unfortunately, there's many of us like myself who were born into the church and knew nothing else growing up. See, see, what Sam describes here is a very real thing. A lot of these people, once they ate the dead, they, they feel so betrayed and disillusioned, it's just absolutely heartbreaking. They, they were trusting, and then these, these stupid lies came in, and they listened to the accusations, and all hell broke loose in their soul. And they think it's the church's fault. And the leader's fault, and God's fault, and the fault of the truth that really it was lies, and they weren't told, you know, about the rotten roots of the glorious tree. But, but sincerely, they were one of the happy people, and then all hell broke loose. And the only thing that changed was they actually listened, they gave ear. You know, be careful how you hear, it says in the Bible. You know, be careful how you hear. But they gave ear to the evil voice of the accuser, supposedly buttressed with facts about things that nobody really knows anything about. And that spirit came into their soul and ate their faith and hope and trust and peace and joy. Just 
turn them into an empty shell, and all they have left to fill it with is the world and all the facts that they think they know about how evil the church is. So anyway, sorry for the interruption, but this this is, you know, the, I feel for these people. I'm not against these people. I feel for them. But But the things that they say and how they say them and the spirit that is speaking through them has to be denounced. In order to delight in the truth, that's a coin. And one side of the coin is delighting in the truth, and the other side of the coin is denouncing deception. I'm not denouncing Sam. I love Sam Taylor. I don't know him, but I love him. I honor his honesty here, because this really shows the inner workings of these people that fall away. And you all know exactly. You've seen, those of you that deal with this personally, you see this same thing in your own households or in your friends or some of your family or, you know, relatives. Okay. Unfortunately, there's many of us like myself who were born into the church and knew nothing else growing up. We were given a life trajectory, and as Elder Bednar put it, once we were baptized, we lost our free agency. We believed completely and participated with the same zeal you are now experiencing. Then there came a point when we found out our leaders will say and do anything, even lie to make sure we don't have all the information and can make an informed decision for ourselves. Once we found out about this, our lives were devastated. I have to interject here. Sam, you didn't find about anything, find out about anything that were real. Your elders, you think it's just such garbage. Jeffrey Holland a human being like Jeffrey Holland, you think you're, that he would say and do anything, even lie, to make sure that you don't know things that you actually need to know? Anybody that would think Jeffrey Holland or our beloved president, prophet, seer, and revelator, President Nelson, or, you know, Elder Bednar, or just fill in the blank, Elder Dukdor for, you, you know, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember all the names. Every one of these people, I watch their conference talks, I listen to them, I'm stunned by what incredible human beings they are, what incredible teachers they are, their obvious humility. And there is not a... Mo I'm not saying they're perfect, they're not. But these are noble human beings. And to say that they're liars and deliberately lying to keep the truth from you, that, that really they should have, you know, made sure you knew, I, I mean, you have just bought the biggest lie on earth, my friend. It's tragic. You're believing the absolute worst. You're, you're not just questioning the hearts of our leaders. You are vomiting on the hearts of our leaders. You're saying the hearts of our leaders are full of evil and malice and lie, lies that they willingly pull the wool over the eyes of all the weak people to just keep them in bondage. This is what you're saying. It's, it's just nuts that you could allow yourself to believe such garbage, Sam. Okay. Our world came crashing down, Sam continues, and we had to start questioning everything. Because... If a church leader will lie about one thing, they'll lie about everything, believing they're doing the right thing. This is the biggest reason why lifelong members are leaving. The trust is broken, just the same as if a spouse cheats in a marriage. It can be repaired, but it's very difficult, and both parties have to be willing to be completely open and honest. To this point, the church is not willing to go. So here's the issue I have with your assessments, David. One, you say faith is not intellectual and we need to become as children. But all the church leaders, most of the 70s, mission presidents, temple presidents, stake presidents, and bishops are generally highly educated and well off. Well, gosh, you must live in Utah, Sam. You know what? My, my, my uh, wonderful bishop, incredible, lovely, kind gentleman, he's, he's a Tongan, you know? with a big Tongan family, and he works in a steel mill, okay? God. All right. This is not a coincidence. They were chosen because of this very thing. These are the people we're supposed to take our examples and instruction from. The church promotes a prosperity gospel, meaning if you're doing well, you're being blessed. 
And if you're struggling, you're not doing enough of the insert primary answers. You can choose to follow blindly as many do, but there's many of us it does not work for. I just have to interject here. Once you receive accusation against the only apostolic and prophetic leaders that hold the keys of the priesthood on the face of the entire earth that Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ are completely relying on to lead a royal priesthood and a holy nation that's going to gather Israel, preach the gospel into all the world, and prepare a bride worthy of Christ's return and bring about the end of the age. And they are the foundation of what our Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ are counting on to lead that, and you receive accusation against the best group, the most united group and best group of human leaders probably that the world has ever seen in the history of the planet, and you decide that they're a bunch of evil, malicious liars who are deliberately hiding the truth from people that people need to know. Once you've done that, of course, you know, it doesn't work for you to have trusting childlike faith and stay on the covenant path. Of course it doesn't work for you. You received the, the evil one's stock in trade is to make people believe the absolute worst about the absolute best, just like Lucifer did at the council when he, you know, thought he knew better than Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, and he had a better plan. And ever since then, He's been trying to get people to believe the absolute best about him, who is the absolute worst, and the absolute worst about the absolute best, which is our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and their plan of salvation. And this is what this is what they do for, about our leaders. The, the whole focus of the evil one is to attack the leaders and get you, Sam, and all your people that you're in league with and that you now have foul fellowship with, to get you all to think that you've had your eyes open and you've seen the light and now you know that these incredible men, far better men than you or me, that these are evil, untrustworthy liars. Shame on you. Of course, you know, following our leaders and trusting uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ and those that he has sent and walking together, keeping the commandments together, and loving one another, and believing the best about one another, which is just what love does, believing the best about one another instead of the worst, on the covenant path, of course that doesn't work for you. You've tossed the best human beings under the uh, on earth under the bus as a bunch of evil liars. You, you know, you've just turned on the best people on earth that you should be looking up to, you're looking down on and despising and trying to destroy people's faith in. And you think, you think, I'm not going to oppose you in that, that I just should be at peace with it and think John Dalen is my neighbor and my friend. Well, God, this isn't Mr. Rogers, man. This is not a phony war. The spirits that lied to you and that you let rip you off, and that you allowed them to persuade you to swallow the rotting, stinky corpse of a dead rat that is just eating you out inside, and and you think, you think that uh, that we should just, uh, you know, go along with that, and and not call a spade a spade. Those accusatory lies destroy human souls, and they're well on their way to completely destroying yours. This is just the reality of it. Okay, Sam continues. Second, I've listened to hundreds of Mormon Stories podcasts. The people that come on are asking to do so. Oh, of course they are. Once, once you've deserted, you want, to, you want to justify yourself and pass on your slander. The people that come on are asking to do so. They're allowed to tell their story just as you do in their own words. Whether you agree with it or not doesn't matter. It's their lived experience. They're not paid to come on. Almost every one of them wants to share in the hopes that someone like myself who's really struggling and can't find any person in the church to have an honest conversation with because we can't talk about these things might take some solace knowing they are not alone. Why do you care if other people choose to stay or leave the church? It does not affect your salvation in any... Well, you know what? I care about them. 
God. And I care about God's purpose. Why do I care that, that people are deceived to believe the best leaders on earth are filthy, deceived liars filled with malice who are trying to pull the wool over the, the, the eyes of, of the saints? Why do I care? <laughs> God. Because it's insane, man. It's the worst lie on earth. Trying to destroy the best thing on earth. Okay? You say, it's their choice to go on Mormon stories. It's just it's your choice to come on here and say the things you do. I support both sides 100%. That is such a lie. You don't support what I'm doing 100%. You know, you just don't, man. <laughs> You're trying to get me here, right here, in what you say next, to stop doing what I'm doing. Okay? Stop the cancel culture, he continues. All of you defenders of the church, get on your podcasts and YouTube videos and just attack, attack, attack. Where is that in the Bible you love to quote so much? God. And if, if you weighed the amount of slander thrown against the church by these Mormon stories types, and it's, it's just slander and lies, man. They're trying to paint the worst, the best thing on earth as the worst thing on earth, and the best leaders on earth as the worst leaders on earth. And, and they're ex-Mormons, and they're doing this. And then you've got the whole world out there and the whole Christian world that have been throw, throwing lies and slander and accusatory fog on us for 192 years. And now the Mormon stories and Apologia Studios types, they pile on, you know. Gosh, it's just nuts. And now here, a few voices are being raised in feeble defense. <laughs> feeble defense of the truth and standing up for the truth and calling a spade a spade, just pointing out that you've lost your righteousness, peace, and joy because you've swallowed the rotting, stinky rat of accusatory lies from Satan, from the accuser of the brethren, who is a liar and the father of lies. Somebody's actually pointing out what's happening. And you're like, stop the cancel culture. I don't think so, man. I'm only going to shout it louder. How can I not? Your life's being destroyed. Your soul is being eaten alive from the inside out. And the, anybody that swallows accusation against the apostolic and prophetic leaders of the true church of Jesus Christ, my word, it, it's like you're right on the verge of blaspheming the Holy Spirit to say that our leaders, who are essentially the vehicle through which the Holy Ghost and the truth of God comes to us to say that their light is darkness and lies. Man, God help you. You're, you're really flirting with disaster. And so, I, you know, if I see somebody driving the, the car, you know, taking their life and a bunch of people, thousands of people, maybe millions of people taking their lives and running off the cliff like a bunch of lemmings believing these lies about the best leaders on earth and about the true church of Jesus Christ, the ark of God, and you want me not to have a problem with it? <laughs> You're dreaming, man. You're just dreaming, Sam. I love you too much to not have a problem with it. I don't want, <laughs> I take no delight in the death of the wicked. I wish you all would repent and return, and come on the covenant path with us again, and be part of the happy people again, and regain your first love and your childlike trust. He goes on. Okay, where's that in the Bible you love to quote so much? Jesus spent most of his time with the outcasts and the sinners, not sitting in a pew on Sunday, dressed the same, talking the same, using all the correct words. I don't know who he's talking about. Maybe there's a kind of a really happening, we're all together culture in Utah. But even my experience in Utah, as limited as it was, all the people I was around that are Latter-day Saints, they're just all regular people with problems, <laughs> just like me, <laughs> you know? And I found, ever since I bumped into the Latter-day Saints, I've been looking for my whole life for people I could have an honest conversation with. And all the people in the Latter-day Saints who love the covenant path and love our leaders they're all the same way they just love to have a real conversation about the things of god uh, maybe they just don't like to listen to unbelief and slander about leaders and a covenant path that they love and so you think nobody wants to have a real conversation but that's your fault man you swallowed the dead stinky rat you, you know what your breath smells like when you have a dead stinky rat in your gut a rotting corpse of a dead rat 
It smells foul, man. People don't want to talk to you. You know? Vomit up the rat and you'll find you can have conversations with people like me. Okay? Anyway. He says, the last thing on this is, why don't you try to listen to the stories and the people that go on Mormon stories? No chance, man. I will never listen to a Mormon stories video. Ever. Try to make friends with John Dillon and mend things instead of all of the us against them. I'm tired of it here and I'm tired of it in our country. I don't know how you defend this when God asked, did you love your neighbor? Yeah, I did, but only the ones who think and look and act like me. John Dillon is your neighbor. I love John Dillon. Repent, John. Repent. Repent and believe the gospel. Stop sliming the best thing on earth and cleverly and craftily and persuasively using people whose faith you broke to increase your ability to break the faith of more people. Just repent, John. Repent. You know, and, and all you people that have just thrown away, you, you've allowed your childlike faith to be destroyed by listening to these kind of lies about the best leaders on earth and about the tithing thing, which I'm going to read now. And just reconsider your ways. Consider your ways. It, like some of these people have commuted. They're like, man, I, I just lost my faith. I was resigning my... And then I realized, hey, my family and I, we were the happiest we could ever be. Forget this stuff. I don't care if it's true. I'm going back. I'm just going to trust and obey and be one of the happy people. Yay! <laughs> That's sensible. That's sensible. Your facts are lies. The facts that you have swallowed are lies from the pit of hell. Okay, and, I, you know, I cannot be quiet about this. Okay, last thing, and I'll get off my rant. You really can't talk about how much money Mormon stories make. Sure I can. And on the other hand, defend the church's finances. Sure I can. The church has 17 million people, you know. If they have 32 million in their portfolio, 32 billion. If they have 100 billion in their portfolio, that's like $5,000 per member. <laughs> And you know what? They're trying to take responsibility for reaching 8 billion people on earth with the gospel. Let's see. What's that? A few dollars per person? Okay. A hundred billion, two hundred billion dollars would be nothing. They're building temples all over the world. They're preparing for, preparing for the millennial reign. They're preparing for the end of this wicked age, man. They've got, you know, if it's a hundred billion, they've got... $5,000 per person that is uh, savings for a rainy day for this huge worldwide family of 17 million people and preparing for the end of the age and to reach 8 billion people. Okay? So this is not, this is not. And, and their entire life and being and raison d'etre for existing, our reason for existing of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and our glorious leaders is what? to bring people to simple childlike faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that they could have their sins forgiven and receive the Holy Ghost and come onto a covenant path and line upon line and precept upon precept, attain their full potential as human beings and bring an end to this wicked age. And then after that, glory. Okay? This is our reason for existence. The reason for the existence of John Dellen and Mormon stories and you to a large extent, even though you don't really admit this to yourself, is to pass on this darkness that you think is light, these lies, and this accusation that you believe you've been enlightened by, and to share that with the world. You know? And it is not the same. People, people that make it their mission to destroy, destroy the childlike faith of true saints are the worst people. They're well on their way to becoming the worst human beings on the planet. This is just reality. There's nothing more precious than childlike faith. And to destroy that, to destroy that, there's nothing worse that you, than you can do. You know, but the whole purpose of the church is not to destroy it, but to build it. So, you know, it, your argument is such a big lie, there's no words for it. And I just have to say that in all love for you, my friend. Okay, come on, at least Mormon Stories is transparent and shows exactly how much is coming in and where it's going. The church would still be hiding all its money if it wasn't for a whistleblower. God. 
Oh, man. The church is hiding all its money. The church, it's nobody's business, the church's finances, man. The general authorities are like the, they're the parents of a worldwide family of 17 million people. I don't need, I don't know or care about the church's investment portfolio. God bless them. I trust them. Anybody with sense would trust them. These are incredible human beings with much wisdom and know what they're doing. And it's not the business of the world or the government. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they don't have any obligation to let all 17 million of us know exactly what's going on, you know, because it's really nobody's business. My parents, when I was growing up, they didn't think I needed to know all the details of the family finances. Wait, why do we need to know all that stuff? Oh, they're hiding. They're hiding. They're, they're not hiding. It's just not the world's business. And you can't, you can't make your family business known, all the details of your family business known to 17 million people without shouting it to the whole world. Okay? So good on them for wanting to keep their investment portfolio private. That's honorable. And it should be legal because the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a worldwide family, spiritual family of 17 million people. It's not a publicly traded for-profit organization. So, ugh. okay. But anyway, here we go. This is the thing that really got me. The church would still be hiding all its money if it wasn't for a whistleblower. John Dellen has spent 20 years building this from the ground up. Every single penny that comes in is donated. He's not hiding money. Well, actually, it isn't. a lot of it isn't donated. He charges for, you know, his counseling and all this stuff. That's, that's not donations, all right? Okay? He's not hiding money and taking advantage of poor people in third world countries, telling them that if you want to see God in Jesus, it costs 10% of your income. This is an absolute travesty in the church and needs to be stopped immediately. Can you really believe when Jesus returns, he's going to say, wow, nice job on the portfolio, too bad, about the people starving and working three jobs to make ends meet. I wish there was something you could have done, but you did your best. I know it's that dang John Dellen and Mormon stories. <laughs> See, this is, this is, these are such vile lies. I just have to laugh. You have to laugh or cry. I, I can't. You know, not that I would try to punch anybody out. I'm not, <laughs> I'm 68. But this is just, this is just so odious. But th these are the, th this is the dead stinky rat exposed for all the world to see. And the rat, the rotting rat is not in the Mormon church. It's not, pardon me. It's not in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The rotting stinky rat is in Mormon stories and people like this gentleman. Okay. Sadly, very sadly. Anyway, I want to read this again, and then I'm going to, um, not the whole letter, but he says, he says that we are hiding money, our, our wonderful leaders are hiding money and taking advantage of poor people in third world countries by telling them, if you want to see God and Jesus, it costs 10% of your income. This is an absolute travesty in the church and needs to be stopped immediately. Can you really believe when Jesus returns, he's going to say, wow, nice job. On the portfolio, too bad about the people starving and working three jobs to meet, make ends meet. I wish there was something you could have done, but you did your best. I know it's that dang John Dellen and Mormon stories. <laughs> you can see how seductive this is. If you have any willingness to receive accusation, oh, gosh, that sounds reasonable. How can we make these these poor people, these starving people, we're making them tithe? And, you know, the poor single mom who's working three jobs, we're forcing her to tithe? That's, it's just such a travesty and needs to be stopped immediately. Sounds reasonable, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, he's converted me. <laughs> he says, these are my opinions. I reserve the right to them just as I respect the opinions of all other commentators. Actually, you don't respect. You think, you think, our, you think the opinions of our leaders and me and, you know, most all of us, that our opinions are a travesty. <laughs> Because the truth is, is that we're doing a, it's, it's simple faith to ask people to obey Heavenly Father and to give 10% of their income to building the kingdom of God and to trust that Heavenly Father is going to take care of them. That's love to do that. That's love. 
because it requires faith, and faith works by love and keeping the commandments of God, and it requires humility to do that, to stay on the covenant path and do that, okay? And just, just I'm so glad I can trust the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints with some of my money every month. I want to trust them with more and more and more and more and more. You know, you know why? I'm going to tell you why now. Okay. Here's my answer to Sam. Hi, Sam. Let's see, how far, how long have I gone? 40 minutes. Whew. That's a long and thoughtful comment. I'm sure you're very sincere and sound very reasonable. My seeming enthusiasm, you think I'm making this stuff up? I'm not. But you totally lose me, Sam. When you attack the most wonderful leaders on earth, the most wonderful men and their wives, the best united group of apostolic and prophetic leaders that have ever existed. Attack them as a bunch of liars about things we need to know. A bunch of liars who will lie about anything if it serves their evil purposes to supposedly keep us in the dark about things we need to know. Listen up, all ye saints. Honest input? That's fine. They welcome honest input, I'm sure. Constructive criticism given humbly in a spirit of believing the best about their hearts? Fine. Even while you may disagree with them in some way? That's fine. But any, even any tiny hint of accusation against our leaders' hearts and motives in leading us? Like Jeffrey Holland that I just showed you the little two-minute video of. Sam thinks... That's an evil liar? It's you you got anything bad to say about that man? You're a liar. That's one of the best human beings that's ever walked the planet. And you don't trust him? Man, your your common sense has been has gone out the window and your trustometer is utterly broken, bro. You're just like you've lost your mind if you don't trust President Nelson and Jeffrey Holland and Elder Bednar and all of their co-laborers in the general authorities. If you don't trust those men, men who actually listen to, listen to and love their wives and they're all together, they all speak the same thing, they all support one another, they're all one, you can't trust that. You'd rather just trust your own foul willingness to believe the worst about them and call their hearts evil and malicious call them malicious liars, my word. Any attempt to sow distrust of our God-given apostles and prophets, any hint of this can't be listened to or respected, even one tiny bit. Silence gives consent, doesn't it? Okay, because this is proof positive right at the beginning of your letter that you swallowed hook, line, and sinker, the rotten, stinking, dead rat crawling with maggots of accusation against our wonderful apostolic and prophetic leaders, which automatically is also an accusation against our Lord Jesus Christ and against our Heavenly Father, who gave those leaders to us. It's your right, Sam, to allow your childlike trust and faith to be destroyed by swallowing whole and chewing on endlessly like a cow chewing its cud. Just bring it back up and chew on it some more. Bring it back up and chew on it some more. That rotten, dead, stinking rat. By swallowing whole and chewing on endlessly this rotting, stinking, dead rat of accusation that was fed to you by the accuser of the brethren, who now has you and all like you right where he wants you. But those who want to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold of eternal life also have the right and obligation and holy calling to call a spade a spade and call light light and call darkness darkness. We have a right and a holy obligation as President Nelson has commanded us to delight in the truth and to denounce deception. And there is no greater deception and possible than the one you and Mormon stories are peddling. The total lie from hell that our wonderful leaders are deceitful, self-interested liars who are not to be trusted. And you're upset that we denounce you and Mormon stories for peddling the worst lie on earth, one that is aimed at totally destroying 
the very foundation of the only true church of Jesus Christ on the earth and destroying our faith and that of those we dearly love, of anyone that gives you any listen at all? Evil, arrogant people never think they're evil and arrogant. They're just totally sure they're right in their arrogance and unbelief in which they look down and speak evil of those they should be looking up to. Such people, Sam, are destroyers, not builders, of faith, hope, and love. People such as you and Mormon stories are given to destroying the faith of sincere saints by your own unbelief and despising of the truth and despising of the leaders that Heavenly Father has so kindly given us for our salvation and exaltation. Of course we have to stand up to you and state boldly that what you imagine to be being enlightened is actually you falling away from the light into darkness and falling away from the childlike trust and humility that's the only way to please God into arrogant mistrust and unbelief and actual hatred of the only truth and covenant path and yes, the only leadership on earth that provides a true foundation by which human beings can fulfill their divine destiny. Once you gave up trusting our apostolic and prophetic leaders and stopped loving them enough to overlook their faults and believe the best about them, which is just what love does, and instead received that spirit of the accuser of the brethren that persuaded you to believe the absolute worst about the absolute best, our God-given apostles and prophets, the best leaders in the history of the world. Well, goodbye to any righteousness, peace, and joy, and goodbye to any hope of fulfilling your divine destiny. Always and forever, the accuser's strategy is to attack the shepherds, accuse them, and get the sheep to distrust their shepherds, and then scatter and devour the distrusting sheep who wander away from their shepherds. Smite the shepherds, and the sheep scatter. Scatter the sheep, and then... Eat them alive, one by one. That's the devil's ploy, and it's a ploy as old as time, and you fell for it. It is sad, Sam. Our united leaders and our prophet are the most worthy of trusting and following of any leaders that have ever existed, anywhere, anytime. But if you want to, you can build a case against anyone, just as Lucifer built a case against Heavenly Father, against Jesus Christ, and against his plan of salvation. Whew. Anyway, I think, let's see here. Our leaders, Sam, are from Heavenly Father through the Lord Jesus Christ, and our leaders are being led by him, and I'm so thankful for them. The truth is, we can only receive Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father. We can only receive them, be with them, love them, and trust them through receiving, being with, loving, and trusting the ones that they have sent, our apostolic and prophetic leaders. This is our foundation that makes real the Lord Jesus Christ being our chief cornerstone. And you, Sam, and Mormon stories types, have left the only true foundation and despise them and accuse their hearts and do your best, even unwittingly, for many of you, to destroy the only foundation that the righteous can stand on. You and those like you and Mormon stories are those who gave up faith and trust in the best thing on earth, and what do you have to replace it with but accusation and bitterness and to try to pass it on to others? And, of course, you don't even have to try to pass it on. Your unbelief and bitterness is now, it's just who you are inside filled with the stinking dead rat of the accuser, and what is in the well comes up in the bucket. You don't even have to try. It just comes out. You end your comment with, please just try to reserve a little judgment, and please be willing to be honest about all sides. And you also claim, I support both sides 100%. Well, Sam, I'm just being honest and true to tell you that your side is not honest or true, in your mountains of accusation against our leaders and our church, and for sure, you are not being honest with yourselves. You are not. You do not support our faith in life and our church and leaders 100%. You support them 0%. It is very sad. May Heavenly Father have mercy on you. He will, but only if you humble yourself to see your need 
and desire his mercy. Much love, David. And um, I left out, there was a part in there where he talks about the tithe and oppressing poor people with the tithe. That would have, that's going to take me another half an hour. So I deleted that. I'm going to do a separate video about that topic. But uh, that was in Sam's letter, which I read. But I'm going to reply to that in the next video. But anyway, Sam wrote back to my reply. Thanks for your thoughtful response. I wish you all the best. And then I replied to him. Hi again, Sam. I wrote my initial response above. I thought more needed to be said. I appreciate you and pray you can recover your first love and childlike faith at some point. It's the most precious thing in the entire universe, without which it is impossible to please God and truly have life and joy. Much love, David. Anyway. Whew. There you go. So with that said, <clears throat> let's see if we can come up with a song here. What song could we sing? Just to kind of wash the stinkiness out of the air. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, for he has done great things. Hallelujah, he has done great things. Hallelujah, he has done great things. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. And for all of those, there's many of us out there that you know I grieve for Sam, and there's so many of us we've we've seen loved ones. You know, many some of us are struggling ourselves, but many of us have seen loved ones be ripped off by this kind of accu accu accusatory uh, spirit that they allowed into their soul, and they bought the lies, and they they lost their faith, their hope, their love, their joy, and they they really it's like they turned into a different person. It's like invasion of the body snatchers. It's a nightmare, and um, it's grievous. It's so grievous. Uh, but here's a song. So for all of us, here's a song of comfort. This is from, uh, I think it's from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, from the King, King James Version. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves selves are comforted of God So blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, 
that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted of God. With the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted of God. With the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted of God. With the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted of God. I think, I, I want to pray now, and I want to pray for President Nelson, and, uh, for Elder Holland, and also for, uh, for Michelle's father, uh, who's not doing well. But we also need to pray for all of these people that are struggling, that their faith is under attack, and um, they've received lies that are eating their faith out from the inside. Because uh, there's nothing more powerful than united, fervent prayer. And uh, we're the only people on earth that have genuine apostolic, prophetic, and priesthood authority. So... You know, if we don't use it to pray for the pressing needs that exist around us that we're aware of, that's sinful, you know. To him who knows to do good and doesn't do it. To him much is given, much is required. We've been given that priesthood authority and apostolic and prophetic leadership and priesthood authority to pray with power and authority about the pressing needs that exist in our lives and in the church. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would just continue to heal and strengthen President Nelson and uh, Elder Jeffrey Holland, body, soul, and spirit, and also Michelle's father. Uh, body, soul, spirit in every way that you would strengthen and heal and deliver in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask this by the power of the Holy Ghost. And we also want to pray for all of the all of the people throughout the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Friends, family, children, spouses, loved ones who are being uh, beleaguered and their faith is under attack by the accus accusatory spirits of the evil one who is the accuser of the brethren. We just pray that you would uh, give us the grace to strengthen one another, to build one another up, to lift high the standard of love, to lift high the banner of truth, to bear witness to the truth, to be bold about our testimonies, to let our light shine, and to pray uh, without ceasing for your protection and enabling, Heavenly Father, that the light of our life would increase and that you would deliver our friends and family from the accusatory lies that uh, they might be in the process of giving place to. Please help us to uh, stand strong in the truth and endure to the end and encourage one another daily and uh, strengthen those who are weak and faltering and help them back onto the covenant path. We just pray that you would just shine your light brightly into the souls of the needy ones and, and help them to understand the devil's devices and to recover their first love. And we just ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. It's wonderful. You can't imagine spending 47 years trying to speak and act for God without proper priesthood authority. How wonderful it is to be able to speak and act for God with proper priesthood authority. It's like, it's like incredible. It's so wonderful. I'm so thankful. <laughs> and I'm thankful for all of you. Now, please, please make it a habit. Every time you listen to a video, a short one, a long one, anyone, unless you don't like it, Hit the like button every time. Hit the like button every time. Every time you do that, you're pushing these videos out to more and more people. Only one in a, 
one in a th one thousandth, one ten thousandth of the people that could be seeing these have have seen these, because there's two billion people on YouTube, and how far out the YouTube algorithm pushes these videos out into YouTube universe depends entirely on the percentage of people that that uh, see the the thumb and they click on it and they like it and they watch it. And if they're not subscribers that subscribe, all of that stuff makes these videos fly off the shelves and out into this lost and dying world. So if you're like, wow, it's amazing what he's doing. I wish there was something I could do. There you go. <laughs> There's something you can do. And you can also record your own testimony and send it to me and I'll put it up. Okay. And then everybody can like that. And that can go out into the world for years, decades and encourage and convict and help and bless untold millions of people. So there you go. That's your part. Like, subscribe, record your testimony, and send it to me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, do it. Amen.